I was born into a Muslim family. Um, my parents were leaders in the mosque and I met these two Christians at my grad school. We just realized, okay, we definitely are both very strong in our faiths, but we can't both be right. We can both be wrong, like logically in my mind, it's like, okay, we can both be wrong about Jesus for sure, but we can't both be right. So we sort of resolved that we wanted to figure out what truth is. And secretly, secretly, I wanted to convert him massively. I totally wanted to convert him to Islam because anytime I would debate anybody about, you know, religion, I would always win. <laughs> and so he gave me a Bible. I gave him a Quran and we started to just sort of do our own research. And I would come with my bullet points and he would come with his. And um, truth be told, you know, since I was you know, uh, an American Muslim being surrounded by non-Muslims, of course, I knew exactly what I believed, why, and had all the arguments. Even though I had felt that I had succeeded in showing him that Christianity was flawed and that Islam was true, I didn't have that satisfaction. I wanted some sort of proof for the first time in my life. And so I just continued to pray, continued to pray. And, um, you know, I would fast and I would just cry out night and day to God, to Allah, the only God that I knew, to show people that he was the truth. I started to just really have a lot of torment. I just thought maybe I was going crazy for the first time, but it was like I couldn't think anymore. And especially as somebody studying to be a doctor and you know, science background, to lose your mind is really a very low point to say the least. So there was one day uh, where I was probably at my lowest point. I was just crying, praying to Allah and saying, I can't do this one more day. And that same day, I got a text message from my friend. He had been praying for me all along and his church actually had been praying too down south. And he, his pastor actually had brought um, or had typed up bullet points from the book by Lee Strobel called The Case for Christ. And so because I was such a, at such a low point at that point, I was like, I'll read anything, why not? It gave so much significant proof for the historicity of the cross and resurrection. And I started to read the Bible again. I was reading it as though it actually could have happened. And I just remember thinking, oh my gosh, this is beautiful. And then I called somebody that I knew who was a Christian. She said, why don't you just ask Jesus to come into your heart? If you're wondering and curious, you have nothing to lose. And you know, little did she know if a Muslim asks Jesus into their heart, it's hell for eternity, no coming back. You cannot come back from that. So I just looked up at the heavens and I said, Allah, I don't know who, you're, who you are. Allah, I don't know what's real. Whoever you are though, I want to give my life to you. If you're Jesus, you can come into my heart. The next morning I woke up and all the torment was gone. So I thought to myself, okay, logic brain, I'll just, I'm gonna really give this exploration of the gospels three or four years of my life and I'm gonna really like look into it to see if it's real. I'm gonna stay a Muslim, of course. I would never leave Islam, but I just wanna give this a chance. And so I just basically went to church that Sunday and some signs had happened that week, all pointing to Jesus. And that Sunday morning, the pastor was preaching and people were raising their hands and I just kind of sat through it. But my heart just wanted to worship. And when the altar call came, we all bowed our heads and the pastor just said, I feel like there's someone in here that wants to give their life to Jesus, but they don't even know what that means and they're really scared. And I just said, enough is enough. It's taking me more faith to not believe in Jesus than to believe in Him. He's my first experience with love.